In today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use the clone stamp tool inside of Photoshop to remove people from your landscape photographs. Now, oftentimes when photographing landscapes, I tend to go shooting with a group of people uh, or maybe just one other person and inevitably we end up getting in each other's shots or maybe while traveling to popular photography destinations or just popular spots in general, you may end up with people wandering in your frame and instead of you know getting upset about it, you just kind of go with the flow and think maybe I can get rid of them in post-processing later. It's just the nature of doing landscape photography in kind of well-known locations. But the good news is you can fairly easily remove them using Photoshop, but it really depends on the photograph itself. For this technique to work, or just I should say to be easy to achieve, you want to have a lot of repeating elements behind the person, or maybe just something that can be copied over from another part of the image. If someone is standing right in front of a very detailed part of the scene or something that you really can't uh, reproduce easily from elements within the photograph itself, then this may not be a good fit. I'll begin with this photo here, uh, photographed in Hawaii, and I chose this because it has a lot of repeating elements throughout the scene. And where that person is standing, it's basically just that same repeating element of uh, the green and some of that lava rock. Anytime I do any type of cloning or healing inside of Photoshop, I always do it on a new separate layer. So in the layers panel, I'm gonna click on that new layer icon at the bottom, and now I have a new blank layer that I can use to put all of my edits onto. I prefer to do this because I just have a lot more control over the process. I can erase parts if I didn't like what I was doing, or I can just delete the layer and start over if I need to without having to really backtrack too far in the history. Now it's time to activate that clone stamp tool. You can get to it quickly by pressing the S key, or you can go over to the toolbar. And if you right click, you can see that there are a few options. You wanna make sure that you have the clone stamp tool active. There are also a few options at the top that I'm always paying attention to whenever I'm using this tool. First, this drop down here, I need it to be set to current and below. What that is saying is that the clone stamp tool is going to affect the current layer or that blank layer that I just created, as well as the layer directly below it. And in this case, I only have two layers, so that below layer is the background layer. If I were to set it to current layer, then it would only clone areas from the layer that is selected, which is the blank layer, but there's nothing on that layer, so that wouldn't work. And if I happen to have a lot of layers, um, let's say I was working on a huge composite and I wanted to make sure that my cloning affected all of those layers, then I would set that as my option. But for my edits, I almost always tend to do it this way where I add a new blank layer and only clone the layer directly below it. The other setting that I tend to change while I'm using uh, this tool is the opacity setting. For this image, I'm gonna keep it at 100%. And I may keep it that way throughout the tutorials here. I have three images I'm gonna show you. But it is something that you can kind of play around with if you wanna get a really good blend. You can set it to maybe 50% and uh, do kind of some different types of blending in your image. It just really depends on, on the scene that you're working on. Okay, so I'm gonna go down to my image here. And one thing to note is if you just click on your image with the clone stamp tool right off the bat, it's not gonna do anything. And Photoshop, of course, comes up with this little dialog box that tells you it's not gonna work until you actually set a source. Now, if you think about, just kind of think in your head of a normal stamp, like a physical stamp, you put it in ink and then you stamp it on paper. And so basically, the clone stamp tool here in Photoshop, when you set that source, it's kind of like putting that stamp inside of ink, and then when you start brushing over the image, you are kind of like stamping onto that paper. So you're, you're setting a source, and then you're copying that source to another part of the image. So I'm gonna go ahead and press or hold that Option or Alt key, and the cursor changes when you do that. Then you click, and now if I hover that over my image, I can actually see a little preview. Now, one thing I'm noticing as I do this is that my brush has a very hard edge. So I'm gonna right click over my image 
and I'm gonna make sure that that hardness setting is set to zero. And then I just start brushing over the image and you can see that that pattern is being stamped over to wherever I'm brushing. Another thing to keep in mind when using this tool is that you want to constantly change the source of your stamp. So I just created this tiny little section here. I'm gonna move my cursor somewhere else. I'm also gonna increase my brush size using that right bracket key. Press and hold the Option or Alt key and click, and then start brushing in a new section. I'll move to another part, press and hold the Option or Alt key, click, and then start brushing. Now for this section right here, I'm actually gonna find a completely different part of the image that looks like it could really match up well. So I'm gonna press and hold that Option or Alt key, and I'm gonna click on this black lava rock, and then move it all the way over, and then start brushing over to bring that part of the image over. And I'll just continue doing this until the person is completely out of the picture. Okay, so I finished doing the cloning. Now, when you are working with this tool, you know exactly what you did. So, you know, I can look in that spot and go, I know I just cloned someone out of it. So it's kind of a good idea to kind of close your eyes, look away, and look back just to see if it's super obvious that you did any cloning or, you know, if you want to make any changes. That way your mind is kind of like refreshed. And I can see a few spots here that look like they are a little bit soft. So I'm going to go back to that clone stamp tool, right click, and I'm going to increase the hardness of the brush to about 30%. And I'm going to sample again. And in some of those areas, I'm just going to tap just to kind of give it a little bit of a harder edge so it's not such a soft transition. I'm just repeating that around the frame. Oops, I didn't like that last one. I'll go ahead and undo that. Now I'll just go ahead and do a quick before and after. Again, when you see that quick before and after, your eyes are gonna know that something has been changed. But if you kind of wash away, you know, the edits in your mind and close your eyes and look back at it, um, it's going to look a little bit more realistic to you. And it's not going to look like something was stamped out of the frame. Now let's move on to another example. This is another good candidate for this type of an edit because the person is standing there and it's basically just grass and a few rocks right behind him. So it's going to be pretty easy to remove him from the scene. Over in the layers panel, I'm going to go ahead and add a new blank layer. I still have that stamp tool active with all of the settings that I just used, including that hardness of 30%, which I actually really kind of like. So I'm just going to keep that. And in this image, I'm just going to start sampling. So I'll hold that Option or Alt key, choose a source. Actually, I don't like that source because I don't like that um, kind of rocky shadow area that I clicked on. So let's start at a different spot. And I ended up getting it there, but that's okay. I will address it later. I'll go up to the top, sample a new spot. I'm gonna go over to the right side, sample a new spot, and I'm just gonna get rid of that rock altogether. Constantly sampling and choosing new places to sample and find that source. And I can see some type of pattern emerging. Uh, I'm not really gonna worry about it yet. I'm gonna wait until I have completely finished uh, getting rid of everything. And so now I'm finished. And if you really look closely, you can see uh, that there are some patterns that are repeating because we have this kind of mossy rock or shadow area that looks the same, a few areas over here that are the same. So I just need to kind of do some more stamping to get rid of that patterned look, which is something you definitely don't want because that's a really obvious clue that you did do some cloning in the image. So I'll go back to that clone stamp tool Oops, let's kind of get rid of this one here. I'm going to choose a source and then clone it out. And just kind of keep moving around. I'm going to reduce the brush size a little bit. That'll help with kind of removing some of that pattern, kind of uh, mixing things up a little bit. And uh, I'm going to undo that last move there and uh, just giving them a different look. 
and let's see if I can get rid of this here. Okay, I think that that's, that's looking good for just a quick edit like that. Let's go ahead and toggle that before and after. I'm gonna make a, a little bit of an adjustment here, increase my brush size, and I'm gonna stamp all the way over from the left and see what this does. I think that, that added a nice little touch to it. All right, so before and after. Again, when you're looking at that spot, you know that, that things have changed. Um, but if I were to share this online or if I were to uh, you know, just kind of come back to it later, it would look a little bit different. It's that quick before and after that you know that the person was edited out. All right, so that's good for now. Let's move on to one last example. All right, so this last example is a little bit different because we're mostly just going to be stamping um, horizontally across the image. I'll go ahead and start out by adding a new blank layer. And I still have that clone stamp tool active. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit on this one and pan over to that main area. So when you are cloning something horizontally like this, you just want to make sure that you keep that horizon or that line that you're following uh, level. So I'm gonna hold that Option or Alt key down and just click over the horizon area. I'm gonna increase my brush size. Actually, I'm gonna start from the other side. I didn't like how this, um, let me go to the hand tool real quickly. I didn't really like how this kind of shadow area was gonna stamp over. So I wanna make sure that I'm not following that. Let me re-stamp over here on the right, over over the person, and just start to clone. Now I'm gonna reduce the brush size and I'm gonna get rid of the leg part here. So let's see, where do I wanna take it from? Let's go ahead and take it from the right again. I'm gonna click over some of that top part of that grass there. And then I'm just going to brush over the legs. I'm gonna fix this little center part here to kind of bring back that, that light area. Okay, so that was a pretty quick and easy edit. I see one small thing I want to correct with that edit that I just did. And then I'm gonna move on and do a little bit more cloning to the photo just to kind of finish it. If you can see here, there's a little white spot in this tree and it was carried over from the white spot in the clone source tree. So I just wanna get rid of that. So I'll press that S key to go to that clone stamp tool and I'm just gonna do a quick clone from the tree itself and then tap that out. Okay, so the person is gone. Now what I'd like to do is get rid of this sidewalk here, just to kind of give the impression that it's a little bit more in the middle of nowhere and we're not walking along a path. So we'll go ahead and increase that brush size. Let's go ahead and choose a source just to the left of that little sidewalk area. And now I'm just gonna brush over and then click again, choose another source, click. So I've basically hid the sidewalk over on that left side. And now I'm just gonna continue it over here on the right. So I like this little spot here. I'll click on this source. And then I'm just tapping really to kind of heal or to kind of clone that area over. And I'm gonna continue over on the right. I'm just choosing a new source every time so it doesn't look too patterned. And I can fix things as I need to by resizing the brush choosing a new clone source. Oops, didn't like that, that added too much of a pattern. All right, let's increase the brush. And I'm just gonna bring that across. You can see it just kind of takes a lot of clicking and moving and changing. And I won't bore you too long with the rest of this and I'm just gonna go ahead and stop here. Now, if I were doing this with a photo I was gonna like share or print, I would definitely get in there a lot closer and spend a lot more time. Um, but I think you guys get the picture with this. All right, so I hope that this gave you guys some ideas and maybe helped uh, rescue some of those photographs where someone was in your photo and you wanted them gone. Now you can do it. If you like this video, please subscribe to my channel and click that bell icon to get notified when new videos are posted.